If you are not using a password manager in 2021, you are definitely doing something wrong. But which is the best password manager? Well, I would say the one that is self-hosted. Hi everybody, I'm Christian and I make tutorials and content for IT professionals. I also stream a lot on YouTube and Twitch where I sometimes do some live Q&As or some live coding and hacking sessions. So if you want to learn that or you have any questions for me, just jump into my live streams. It's always a lot of fun. So in this video, I will show you how to easily set up and deploy a self-hosted password manager with Bitwarden. So Bitwarden is a free password manager where you can just sign up and use that completely for free. They also have a pro and a premium plan where you can extend that with some advanced features. But of course, then all the data, all your secrets and your vault is stored on their cloud servers. But they're also offering a free available backend server you can host in your own infrastructure. And this is really, really cool. It's very well documented and you can find all the information on the official homepage and it's very straightforward to set up. You can use that on any Linux server. But they are also partnering with DigitalOcean, my favorite cloud provider by the way. So if you want to set this up, they also have a one-click solution on the marketplace where you can just click on the marketplace and deploy a simple Linux server with Bitwarden already installed. So not if you want to try out DigitalOcean, you can find a referral link in the description below. There you will get $100 completely for free for 60 days and you can just use to deploy any cloud instances or services with that. So note it's very important to mention that this requires at least 2 gigabytes of memory. So I have tried to deploy this official Bitwarden server on a droplet that only has 1 gigabyte, but this didn't work because especially the SQL server needs a lot of memory. So you will need at least 2 gigabytes of memory if you want to deploy the official Bitwarden server. Why I'm saying the official server? Well, because there's also a third party solution around. This probably is a bit more lightweight, so you can deploy this on a smaller droplet with with just one gigabyte or you can run this on a Raspberry Pi, you should be fine. But note, I've seen many people doing videos or tutorials around this third-party implementation without mentioning this is not the official Bitwarden server. You can find this project on GitHub and it's even mentioned in the first few lines that this is a third-party Rust implementation of the Bitwarden API and if you have any trouble or problem setting up this, you should never reach out to the official Bitwarden support because this, of course, is not officially supported. So I think it's very important mentioning this, but it's up to you which solution you will choose. So I don't want to tell you you should use the official server or the third-party solution. I thought I would just show you both and walk you through the installation procedure of the official one and of the third-party solution, and then you can decide for yourself which one works best for you. And as always, you don't need to remember any commands in this tutorial. I've put your link in the video description below to my written blog article. There you can read all the instructions and you can copy all the commands, the links to the official documentation and so on. So first we will start with the official Bitwarden server, which is the heavyweight implementation where you need 2 gigabytes of memory at least. So let's get started. To find the instructions for the self-hosted Bitwarden server, just go to the official homepage and click on help. So that will take you to the documentation. Now, if you go to on-premise section, you can go to the install and deploy tutorial that will show you all the necessary steps. So as I've mentioned, you will also find the one-click solution from DigitalOcean here. But in our case, we want to install that on a Linux server that already installed Docker and Docker Compose. I'm using DigitalOcean to deploy a new droplet and use the Ubuntu image with Docker and Docker Compose from the marketplace. So therefore I don't need to install Docker and Docker Compose manually. But note if you're not using DigitalOcean and you want to know how to install that, it's very easy and it's also mentioned in the official Bitwarden documentation. So I have now deployed a new droplet server and I also need to set a DNS A record that points to the public IP address of this server. This is very important because Bitwarden automatically obtains trusted SSL certificates and therefore you need a valid FQDN that points to the public IP of your server. So this is very important. So now you could just install Bitwarden via the scripts, but not it's recommended that you create a new user first because I don't want to run all these commands with my root user. So first let's create a new Bitwarden user and add a comment as well so we know this is an administrative user. Also set up the shell and create home folders for this user. We also need to set up a password 
and add this user to the docker group so this is very important because otherwise this user cannot execute any docker commands. I also want to add my public key that I'm currently using to connect as a root user to the Bitwarden user so you don't really need it but if you don't want to log in as root all the time you could simply just use the Bitwarden user to authenticate via SSH to your server and do administrative tasks as well. So therefore I copy the public keys in the authorized key file to the Bitwarden user in the .ssh directory. So now let's create a new Bitwarden folder in the opt directory. So this will be the place where all the scripts, the data of the server and the application itself is stored. So also set the permissions to the owner of this directory. So this is a bit more secure. And of course also change the owner of the directory to Bitwarden. And now we simply can reconnect to our server or just use the su command to log in with our Bitwarden user. And let's go to the opt folder and paste in the CLI command from the Bitwarden documentation that downloads the installation script. So if that is done, we can also execute it. And once the installation script has started, it first wants to enter us a public domain. So this is a DNS record I've just created in the beginning that points to the public IP address of our new server. We also want to generate a free SSL search, so therefore I will enter a yes. And we also need to enter a valid email address. This is needed for the SSL search renewal messages and so on. So now Bitwarden obtains a new SSL cert and if this process was successful we need to enter an installation ID and a license key. So we can go to the homepage and just register a new ID and get a license key. So you can obtain this completely for free but this is just important if you want to add premium features later I guess. So we just get the information, paste it into the script and now the installation continues. Once this is finished, you can simply start the containers with the Bitwarden script. So execute the Bitwarden script and put a start at the end. So this will automatically start all the necessary containers. If you do this the very first time, Docker of course needs to download all these container images. And after this is finished, it will start all the containers. So this can take some time. If you do it the first time, you can see this server deploys many, many different containers. And our server is now up and running, but before we want to access it, uh, we need to change a few parameters in a configuration file because you need to register new users and the activation and verification emails are sent by an email server. So of course it's not using any official Bitwarden server to send out any emails because this is a self-hosted environment. You need to have your own email server that will send those emails out to the users. So if you don't have a mail server, well, you could still just create a new account, but you wouldn't receive any activation verification emails and you can't get sent a password hint. So let's set up credentials for our mail server. You could use a mail server from your ISP, but I've also made a video about setting up your own mail server on a Linux distro that is working in just 15 minutes and it's very easy and straightforward. It uses a free open source project that is called MailCow. This is also powered by Docker and it's very similar to this tutorial because you also need to have a Docker and Docker Compose server installed and then just simply execute some scripts that will deploy a mail server with MailCow. So I've put you the link to this video in the description below. And because I've already done that, I can fill out the configuration information about where is the SMTP server, set up a reply email and also configure proper SMTP credentials. So after that is done, we need to restart the Bitwarden server. So execute the Bitwarden script and do a restart. And now we are able to create new accounts and we also should receive invitation mails from our own self-hosted server. So if we now log in, we can access our vault and do some settings. It's just exactly the same web page that we would use the official Bitwarden server. So there are no hidden modified things in the self-hosted version. But there's also an admin panel existing, so you first need to enable this by adding a user to the authorized admin users. It's described in the documentation, you basically just need to edit the same file where you need to fill in the email server settings and add administrative users there. 
Of course, you also need to restart this server afterwards. There's also a setting where you can disable the user account creation so that no one else can create any user accounts on your self-hosted server. That could be useful when you are making the server available on the public internet without any other access control. So I would definitely do that after you have created your own account because otherwise someone else could just use your server. <laughs> So I've tested Bitwarden quite a while now and I'm slowly migrating all my secrets and notes from my last pass password manager, which I was using before, to my own self-hosted Bitwarden installation. And so far, I'm pretty happy with this password manager. It also offers some interesting features like the two-factor authentication with any free authenticators from Google, Microsoft and so on. You can also connect your mobile phone, scan the QR code, but there's also a premium feature for connecting a YubiKey if you prefer a hardware token, so that's very nice. And I've also connected my browser extension for Bitwarden and the official Windows client with my own self-hosted environment. So note that on the clients and the browser extension, you first need to go to settings and change the URL to point to the public domain where you also can access the web version of your self-hosted environment. So otherwise the client obviously doesn't really know where to connect to. Once you've done that, you can simply just log in and synchronize your secrets between the client app and your server vault. So that's working very well. You can use that to store any logins, password and also secure notes. So that's definitely good if you want to store any confidential information. And I also would recommend you to set up two-factor authentication for your account as well. So this was the official Bitwarden server. I think this is pretty easy and straightforward to set up. They have some scripts around all the Docker installation and so on. But as I said in the beginning, there is also this third party solution around. This is a Rust implementation of the Bitwarden API. And this just runs in one single container and is just much more lightweight. And this is also pretty straightforward to set up. But note you will need a reverse proxy to set up this because this is not actually secured with any SSL certs or anything like this. So therefore I will use Portainer to deploy this container and I also will use the Nginx proxy manager to expose this server securely on the public internet. So note if you want to learn more about Portainer or the Nginx proxy manager and you don't know how to install or set this up, I've made two videos about this. You will also find the link in the video description below, so check it out. And we will start now with a third party implementation of the Bitwarden API, so let's go. You can find the Bitwarden RS slash server project on GitHub and as I said in the beginning, they mention it on their project that this is a third party application written in Rust that basically just simulates a Bitwarden server. So this project is currently maintained and compatible with the official Bitwarden clients and browser extensions as well. When you read the installation instructions, you can see it simply deploys within the single Docker container which is much more lightweight and it probably also easier to set up within your own existing Docker infrastructure. So if you are just running Docker, you simply can execute this command or use a Docker Compose file from the examples. Or if you are using Portainer like me, you can simply just deploy this in a graphical user interface. So let's first create a new volume on Portainer so that can store all the data persistently on our server. And then we simply just create a new container, give it a name Bitwarden and select the Bitwarden RS slash server image as our Docker image. And then we need to select our created volume and point this to the slash data location inside the container. And because we also need to expose it with a reverse proxy, I want to attach this container to the front end network where my Nginx proxy manager is already connected and installed. Therefore, I also don't expose this container with any ports directly because that should be done by the reverse proxy and the container should not be accessible directly because it's not encrypted and secured via HTTPS. Let's also change the restart policy to always and then deploy the container. So when the container is running, I now want to expose it on my web server. And I'm using the Nginx proxy manager to do that. You could also in theory just use any other load balancer or reverse proxy. You will find some examples for other applications on their project wiki. But because I recently deployed the Nginx proxy manager in another video, let's simply just use the already existing one. 
By the way, if you don't know how to set this up, just check out my video about it. I've put your link in the description below. There I walk you step by step through the installation and setup of Nginx Proxy Manager inside Portainer. So you can simply just watch this video and after that, just come back to this video and continue the bit one installation. So in the Nginx proxy manager, let's create a new proxy host and let's add the domain name where our DNS record points to the public IP address of this server here. And as a target, we simply can use the service name that we have used to deploy the Docker container. This is accessible via unencrypted HTTP on port 80 and I also want to block common exploits. So note I probably would also consider using an access list to lock down the access to your server, but I will do a separate video on access lists on Nginx Proxy Manager anyway, so once this video is released I will also put it in the description. So let's request a new SSL cert and enable also the HTTP2 and HSTS support and save our proxy settings. So that was it. Everything should work now. So let's try to exit it. And you can see the Bitwarden server is now online. And let's create a new account just like we've done in the official one. And it's basically working the same way like the official Bitwarden server. But some features of course may be different. There's also an admin panel existing where you first need to generate an administrator token that simply can be done in a Linux terminal and this admin token you need to put it as an environment inside the Docker container and redeploy it. So now the admin panel is enabled and you can access it with a token. There's also a second environment variable if you want to disable the user account creation afterwards. So you can also use that and redeploy the container with that environment variable. So to be honest guys, I'm not really a friend of the admin token authentication. It probably works but I would definitely think about securing this admin panel with something else. So you could use the Nginx proxy manager with access lists to do that or just disable the admin panel if you don't need it. So I've showed you both solutions, the official Bitwarden server and the third party app. And I also compared the performance on both implementations as expected. The third party solution is very lightweight. You can see in the Portainer statistics, it just uses a few megabytes of memory compared to the official one, which actually needs at least two gigabytes even just to start up. And that's because of the SQL server that just utilizes so much memory even without doing anything. But let's say you deploy this on a company that uses this service pretty heavily, I would probably go with the official server because in a scaled environment the SQL server could be so much faster. And of course you also have other features like single sign on which will be interesting for a company. But for a small installation or even just for yourself this completely doesn't matter and it's probably better to deploy a lightweight solution on a small cloud instance, Raspberry Pi or somewhere else. So I hope this video helped you to set up a self-hosted password manager with either the official Bit1 server or the third-party solution. It's completely up to you which solution works best for you. I don't want to decide that for you. So just check it out, try it out, and then decide for yourself. But note, I think it's very important to understand that a third-party solution is not officially supported and you should not reach out to any of the official support chains if you have trouble setting up this. The better way to reach out for help is to join our Discord community and just ask for help because we have a community with many IT professionals around different topics and areas. So just check it out, it's really awesome. And if you enjoyed this video and this was helpful to you, then please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more tutorials for IT professionals. So thanks everybody for watching, enjoy the rest of your day, take care of yourself and I see you soon.